In this video, we have collected information from various sources to provide a complete guide to the MACD indicator. We created this video course for the trader at entry level. So, if you are a beginner or an advanced trader, watch the full video to grasp every concept in detail. Here are the topics covered in this course. We will cover the basics of the MACD indicator, including what it is and how it works. We will accomplish this by understanding the components of the MACD, such as the MACD line, signal line, and histogram. Next, we will dive deep into the uses of the MACD indicator, including the histogram slope, crossovers, zero line crossovers, zero line pullbacks, and divergences. You will learn how to use these techniques to identify trade opportunities. Finally, we will combine the uses of MACD with other concepts to create four advanced strategies you can use to trade different market conditions. You will learn how to use the MACD to trade reversals and trends. So without any further ado, let's get started. What is the MACD indicator? MACD stands for Moving Average Convergence Divergence. It is used to identify trends and momentum of the price. The MACD indicator consists of three components, the MACD line, the signal line, and the histogram. Let's understand each of these components in detail. First, let's start with the MACD line. The MACD line is calculated by subtracting the 26-period EMA from the 12-period EMA. This means that whenever the 12 EMA is above the 26 EMA, the MACD line will be above zero. When the 12 EMA moves below the 26 EMA, the MACD line goes below zero. Next, we have the signal line. The signal line is a nine period exponential moving average of the MACD line. The signal line aims to provide crossovers as an entry trigger. Lastly, we have the histogram. The histogram calculates the distance between the MACD line and the signal line. By doing so, it gives us a better understanding of the momentum. When the MACD line is above the signal line, the histogram will show green bars above the zero line. This shows us that the price is in an uptrend. On the other hand, when the MACD line is below the signal line, the histogram will show red bars below the zero line. So these are the three components of the MACD. We have the MACD line, the signal line, and the histogram. Now let's understand how to use these components in different market conditions. Use 1. Histogram Slope the slope or shape of the histogram gives us a deeper understanding of the trend. When the price is in a strong trend, the distance between the MACD line and the signal line increases. As a result, the histogram expands. An expanding histogram is a sign of growing momentum. Therefore, if the histogram is expanding, we should look for entries in the direction of the trend. As the trend gets weak, the histogram starts to shrink. This is a sign that the momentum of the move is lost, and the price might reverse or stay sideways. During such times, it is better to exit our trades and wait for the price to generate momentum again. For a better visual presentation, the MACD histogram on TradingView has light and dark colors. We see dark colors when the histogram is expanding and light colors when the histogram is shrinking. At the beginning of an up move, when you see two or more dark green bars with an expanding histogram, it is a sign that the upwards momentum is solid and growing. Therefore, it is an excellent opportunity to look for buying entries. Then, when the histogram starts to fall or decrease in size, it is time to get out of the trade. This indicates that the momentum has decreased and a reversal or a sideways trend may establish itself. As you can see, the shrinking of the histogram coincides with this sideways range. 
Then we have this down move. At the beginning of the down move, we see these dark red bars with an expanding histogram. If you haven't already, this is your last chance to exit your previous buy positions. These dark red bars sign that new sellers have entered the markets, and they are moving the markets with heavy momentum. It's time to enter new sell trades. Then once the price moves a certain distance, the histogram starts to shrink, as we see these light red bars. It is an early indication that the down move is losing momentum, and a reversal or sideways range may establish itself. And as you can see, the price stayed sideways as the histogram shrank itself. Again, a point to remember here is that this is just one use of the MACD. You cannot make trade decisions based on this one factor alone. We will show you how to combine it with other factors in the advanced strategies. If you are enjoying this video so far, then be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to never miss any of our videos. You can also follow us on Instagram by clicking the link in the description below. Now, moving on to the second use. Use 2. Crossovers A lot of traders like to use the moving average crossover system for their trading, but crossovers happen only after a good move in price. As a result, our entries are late, and the price has already moved a lot. To address this problem, we could use the MACD crossover. The MACD crossover can give you an early sign of a reversal. It can also provide you with better entries and smaller stop losses. To prove this, I have plotted the 12 and 26 EMAs on the chart along with the MACD. As you already know, the MACD is calculated on the 12 and 26 EMA, so this should be a fair comparison. Here is the reversal point. From this point, the price reversed from an uptrend to a downtrend. The crossover for the moving averages occurred here. So your entry would be on this candle. As you can see, the price had already moved quite some distance before giving the crossover signal. So ideally, your stop loss would be above this high, which is quite a wide stop loss. But if you look at the MACD, your entry signal would be on this candle as the MACD line crossed below the signal line it gives you a far superior entry price with a tight stop loss. As a result, you capture a bigger portion of the price move. Here is another example. We can see that the 12 EMA crossed above the 26 EMA on this candle. It is a bullish crossover, so a buy entry occurs here. But the crossover happens only after the price has moved a certain distance. On the other hand, the MACD crossover occurred here, giving us a far better entry price. As a result, we captured a good portion of this move with a tighter stop loss. MACD crossovers can be an early sign of reversal, but they generate far more false signals, so we can't use these crossovers in isolation. A more confirmed signal is the zero-line crossover. Use 3 zero line crossover. The MACD consists of a zero line, which is known as the midpoint of the indicator. When the 12 EMA crosses below the 26 EMA, the MACD line moves below the zero line. This shows that the trend and momentum have shifted downwards, and a downtrend may start. Similarly, when the 12 EMA crosses above the 26 EMA, the MACD line moves above the zero line. This shows that the trend and momentum have shifted upwards, and the price may start an uptrend now. The zero-line crossovers give fewer false signals, but again, we need to add more confirmations for them to be high-probability trades. Use 4. Zero-Line Pullbacks In strong trending markets, the MACD line will often pull back to the zero line, and the price will bounce back. So in an uptrend, if the MACD line pulls back to the zero line, it is a good place to make buy trades. But again, we cannot randomly buy whenever the MACD line reaches zero. We must wait for the MACD line to cross above the signal line to make a buy trade. 
Similarly, in a downtrend, if the MACD line pulls back to the zero line, it is a good place to make sell entries. We wait for the MACD line to cross below the signal line. We enter on the crossover. Now, moving on to the last use. Use 5. Divergence. Divergence is a sign of reversal, and it can be very helpful in spotting trend changes. A divergence occurs when the price and the MACD give different outputs. We will use the histogram to spot these divergences. Divergences are of two types, a bullish divergence and a bearish divergence. A bullish divergence occurs when the price makes a lower low, but the MACD makes a higher low. This shows that the momentum on the last down move was lesser than the prior down move. It is a sign that the sellers are tired and the price will likely stall or reverse. Here is an example. Here, the price was in a downtrend. The price created these three lower lows, each low being lower than the previous one. However, the MACD makes higher lows. This is a clear divergence. It shows that the sellers are losing their strength and a reversal may occur. So this becomes a good buy signal. Now let's understand the bearish divergence. A bearish divergence occurs when the price makes a higher high, but the MACD makes a lower high. This shows that the momentum on the last up move was lesser than the prior up move. It is a sign that the buyers are tired and the price will likely stall or reverse. Here is an example. Here, the price was initially in an uptrend. The price makes a higher high, but on the MACD, we see lower highs. This is a clear bearish divergence. It is a sign that the buyers are losing momentum and strength. As a consequence, the sellers might jump in and take these prices downwards. A lot of traders find it difficult to find entries on divergences. But don't worry, we will show you our special technique in the strategies section. A quick note about divergence. Only look at divergences if they are clear and obvious. It should be apparent to the naked eye. Here is an example. Here, the price made this higher high, but on the MACD, we have lower highs. But the divergence is not very clear on the MACD. These two tops seem equal to the naked eye. We need a close examination to see if the second top is lower than the first. So the best thing to do here is to avoid such divergences. On the other hand, this was a clear divergence. The price makes higher highs, but the MACD makes lower highs. We should look for these types of divergences. Divergences that are obvious to the eye can be very powerful. So these were the five uses of the MACD indicator. Now let's discuss the strategies that can be created around the MACD indicator. The first two strategies are reversal setups, while the last two are trend following setups. These four strategies will enable you to trade the markets in any condition. You can use these reversal setups when the price is in a range bound market. And during strong trends, the trend following strategies will help you catch pullbacks. Strategy 1. Divergence plus support and resistance. As we already discussed, divergence is a strong sign of reversal, but we cannot trade every divergence. We need to identify potential reversal areas and wait for the MACD to create divergence around those areas. For this, we will use the concepts of support and resistance. We will first identify the support and resistance levels on a higher time frame. Then, wait for divergence on a lower time frame. Here is an example. We have the GBP USD pair on the 4 hour chart. The price made an up move and then reversed. So we plot a level of resistance here. When the price arrives near the resistance for the second time, we expect the price to reverse downwards again. So, we switch to a one hour chart to look for divergence. Here is the same price action on a one hour chart. 
we see that the price made a higher high coming into the resistance level. But on the MACD, we see lower highs. This is a clear and obvious bearish divergence. It tells us that the buyers have lost momentum coming into the resistance. We have a confluence of a resistance level with divergence. This is a high probability trade. Therefore, we should look out for a sell trade. For our entry, we need to identify the lowest point between the tops on the MACD. These are the two tops. Here is the lowest point between them. We draw a line at that bar. Then we wait for the histogram to break below that line. On this bar, the histogram breaks below the line. So we enter a sell trade on the corresponding candle. As you can see, we saw a steep down move after our entry. Here is an example of a buy setup. We have the USD JPY on a 4 hour chart. This upside reversal helped us identify this support level. When the price returns to this level, we expect the price to find support and move upwards. So we switch to a 1 hour time frame and look for a bullish divergence. The price makes a lower low coming into the support zone. But on the MACD, we see a higher low. This is a clear and obvious divergence. It shows us that the sellers have lost their strength and momentum in this down move. So, we identify this as a high probability trade setup. Now, we mark the highest point between the bottoms on the MACD and draw a line. On this bar, the histogram breaks above the line, and it is a buy signal. So we buy here. As you can see, the price made an up move and touched the most recent highs. So this is how to use the divergence with concepts of support and resistance. Now let's look at the second strategy. Strategy 2. Divergence plus Bollinger Bands Bollinger Bands are a very popular indicator that traders use to trade reversals. The theory is this. 90% of the time, the price is expected to stay within these bands. So, whenever the price moves outside the bands, we can expect the price to reverse and return inside. If the price moves above the upper band, we expect it to reverse downwards. Similarly, if the price moves below the lower band, we expect the price to reverse upwards. We will combine this analogy with the MACD divergence. But first, we will go over the Bollinger Band settings and change the length to 200. We will keep the standard deviation to 2. This gives Bollinger Bands on the 200 moving average. Here is a cell setup using this strategy. Here, we see that the price was in an uptrend. The trend was so strong that the price stayed above the upper Bollinger Band for an extended period. Now, we expect the price to move lower, so we look for a bearish divergence. Here, the price made a higher high, but the MACD histogram made a lower high. In fact, on the second top, we don't even see a green bar. This is a great sign that the sellers have grabbed hold of the markets and the price will follow soon. So a selling opportunity presents itself. For this strategy, our entry occurs on the first candle that closes back inside the bands. So this will be our entry candle. And as you can see, the price made a solid down move after our entry. Moving on to buy trade. Initially, we saw a massive down move that stayed below the lower band. The price spends a lot of time below the band. We know that the price cannot spend so much time outside the bands, so we are already expecting a reversal to the upside. Towards the end of the move, we see the price was constantly making lower lows, but the MACD histogram was plotting higher lows. This was a clear and obvious divergence. We have a combination of the Bollinger Bands and the MACD divergence. It indicates that the sellers have lost all momentum coming into the down move. 
the buyers are pushing hard, and an upwards reversal may occur soon. So we should look for a buy trade. Our buy entry occurs as the price closes above the lower band on this candle. As you can see, the price shot up after our entry. So this was a unique way of trading MACD divergence with Bollinger Bands. Now, moving on to the trend trading strategies. Strategy 3. EMA Bands plus Zero Line Pullbacks For this strategy, we will need four indicators. We need the MACD and the three exponential moving averages. All three of them are 200 EMAs, but with different sources. The upper EMA is calculated on the highs of the candles. The middle EMA is calculated on the close, and the lower EMA is calculated on the lows. For TradingView users, you can use the Moving Average Ribbon Indicator. Just go to the Indicators section and search Moving Average Ribbon, select this indicator, and change the settings to the following. Once done, your chart should look something like this. Now, we have these moving average bands that will help us identify trade opportunities. When the price is trending, these bands will provide support and resistance to the price. In an uptrend, we often see that the price pulls back to these moving averages and finds support. Similarly, in a downtrend, the price pulls back to these moving averages and finds resistance. A point worth remembering here is that price will not always bounce exactly from the bands. Sometimes the price goes deeper before reversing. Now, let's combine this with the MACD and create a strategy. Here is a buy setup. The price made a strong up move here. The price stayed above the bands and the bands were sloped upwards. This is a sign that the price is in an uptrend. Then, the price pulls back to the EMA bands. Now, we expect the price to find support here and move upwards. We also see that the MACD line has crossed below the zero line. In an uptrend, we expect the price to bounce after the MACD touches the zero line. This is also a sign that the pullback might be over, and that the price may resume the uptrend again. So now, we have a confirmation of the MACD and the EMA bands. For our entry, we will not use the MACD line crossover. MACD crossovers are good for reversals, but they are not so good for pullbacks. Most of the time, they will provide a late entry in pullbacks. For a better entry, we will create a short-term trend line on the pullback and enter on its breakout. As you can see, the price made a strong up move after our entry. Here is a sell trade. We see that the price was consistently trading below the EMA bands and the bands were sloped downwards. This is a sign that the price was in a strong downtrend. Then, the price pulls back to the bands. We expect the price to find resistance at these bands and move lower. We also see that the MACD has crossed above its zero line. This also indicates that the price may start a down move again. Therefore, we have a confluence of the MACD and the EMA bands. Now, we create a short-term trend line and wait for the price to break it. On this candle, the price broke below the trend line. We enter a sell trade. As you can see, the price moved downwards after our entry. Now let's discuss the last strategy. Strategy 4. Swap Zones plus Zero Line Pullbacks If you trade support and resistance, you might know that the support and resistance have dual properties. This means a resistance level can become a support level after a breakout. Similarly, a support level can act as resistance after its breakdown. This is why we call them swap zones. 
they swap roles with each other. We will use this concept with the MACD to trade this strategy. Here we see that the price was in a steady uptrend. We spot this reversal here and plot a resistance level. Then the price broke above the resistance level. Therefore, the resistance level has now turned into a support level. When the price pulls back to the support level, we expect the price to bounce and move upwards. We also see that the MACD line is below zero, showing signs of support. We spot this doji right at the support level and enter a buy trade. And as you can see, the price shoots up and trades higher. Here is a sell trade. Here, the price was in a downtrend as it moved lower. This reversal point helped us identify a support level. Then, the price broke below it, turning the support into a resistance level. When the price pulls back to the resistance level, we expect the price to bounce. We also see that the MACD has moved above the zero line. So, we enter a sell trade when we see this evening star candlestick pattern. And as you can see, the price moved lower. So this is how you trade using the MACD. In this video, we first understood the uses of the MACD indicator. Then we discussed four advanced trading strategies using it. If you want us to cover some specific topics, be sure to comment below as we appreciate your suggestions. Also, let us know what you think about this video. If you found value in this video, then be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our new videos. You can also follow us on Instagram by clicking the link in the description below. See you soon!